What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and this is a very rare book haul here on Reading in Bed. Um, you guys know I don't do a lot of them um, and I haven't even really been buying many books this year, not for any particular reason, but since my birthday I have been. Um, and let's start with the big one and this can serve as my Friday reads as well. Uh, it's Duck's Newburyport and um, I gotta say my little magnetic bookmark with the arrow on it is coming in rather handy, although I also want to say like everyone says this book has no paragraph breaks and no sentences it does like it doesn't have a lot but it does so I mean I just hate it when people exaggerate like that you can say there's you know typically only a paragraph break every 75 pages or so that's true you don't have to say there's no paragraph breaks anyway rant over I am enjoying this so uh, you'll have to stay tuned though I'm only on page 130 um, then I have a bunch of books from Glass Bookshop which if you follow me on any kind of social media you've probably seen me talking about or showing pictures of this is a new uh, local bookstore here in Edmonton it's currently in a pop-up location but they will have a permanent one I think next year. Um, so the owners are Jason Purcell and Matthew Stepanek. Both, you know, I've known both of them for many years. They're great guys. Uh, they're doing something really different with this bookstore too. Um, it focuses uh, on local authors, Canadian authors, but also LGBTQ2S plus and, uh, you know, authors of color and, and just sort of like marginalized uh, writers of all kinds. They've also got lots of um, cute giftware in there and like the aesthetic of it very much matches uh, what you would expect if you follow them on Instagram. Like the, you know, everything is on brand. It, it's really great. They're just doing such a bang up job. And so of course I've been in there buying books. So um, first of all, I got Slammerkin uh, from them because I went to an event with Emma Donahue last night. I was so excited, so fangirly. I try not to get like that with authors anymore, just, you know, all the scandals and whatnot lately. But uh, I don't know, Emma Donahue, I can't say anything bad about Emma Donahue. I don't think anyone can. So I got my copy of Slammerkin signed um, and uh, I'm just really glad to own this. It seems like I've read quite a few of her books, but they've all been like library books, audio books. So I'm just glad I can have this on my shelf now. This is one of my favorite favorite books of all time. I would compare it to The Crimson Petal and the White. If you're into that kind of historical, um, you know, down and dirty kind of fiction, then you need to read this. Um, okay, so a few other from uh, Glass Bookshop. I uh, kind of picked this one up as a cover buy just because it's so shiny. Uh, this is Echolocation, a short story collection by Karen Hoffman, but I've also read both of Karen Hoffman's uh, previous novels and really like them. Um, so I'm interested to see what she's doing with her short stories. And uh, then we get into uh, some novellas in November content, which it's coming up soon, guys. And I know everyone's busy and excited with nonfiction November. Um, you can, I mean, you can do both though. Like I, I know novellas mean fiction, but I often include some sort of uh, book length essays and, and that kind of thing, although the, the two here I have um, are fiction. So the first one is The Poor Claire by Elizabeth Gaskell and this uh, was you know kind of reprinted by Stonehouse Publishing, a, a local publisher here in Edmonton. I don't know a lot about this one but uh, you know nice transition from Victober to uh, to novellas in November right? So and I think like 63 pages which is great. Um, and then uh, the other one is called Bidayune by Caitlin Purcell. So this is a uh, local, I believe she's local, the story is definitely local. It's, set in Edmonton um, about, uh, it says they, uh, what it is to be a young indigenous woman almost alone in the city, unable to hear herself over its noise, see through the glare of its lights to find the ground beneath her feet. Uh, stories of addiction, self-discovery, um, you know, so, and there's lots of good blurbs on the back. Uh, it's, it's another shiny cover. So uh, this was a personal recommendation from Matthew Stepanek, one of the uh, owners of Glass Bookshop. And even though, I, you know, I flipped through and I thought, um, I thought this was poetry because some of the text is kind of spaced out in different, you know, like, like that, but he assures me it's novella, so uh, we shall see. And then just a, a few odds and ends. Um, I got 
this essay collection by Rachel Cusk, uh, Coventry. I read a really intriguing review um, of this maybe a week or two ago, and so this was just sort of an impulse buy. I had a gift card. Thank you to my brother-in-law for that. Um, so, so yeah, that's what I like to do with my birthday gift cards, is just go into a bookstore and, and not have any plans. So I, I had my hand on this one and on the new Zadie Smith short story collection. Did I choose wisely? You can tell me in the comments. And then finally, I just have a couple of uh, used bookstore buys. So um, I got this, The Life of Charlotte Bronte. So got two gas skills in this haul. Um, optimistically thinking I could get to it for Victober, but uh, you know, given that I have 900-ish pages left of Duck's Newburyport. We'll see about that. And uh, finally, Milkman. Uh, really happy to find this one used and really want to get to it this year. So I'm going to have to figure out how that's going to fit in among all the novellas. And, uh, you know, I usually do a whole month of rereading in December. So, oh, you know, you guys know it's stressful <laughs> being a booktuber, isn't it? Uh, anyway, that is my haul. Um, the only other book I am intending on getting this year really is uh, The Innocence by Michael Crummy, which is shortlisted for the Giller Prize. I've just been waiting for it to come in. Um, hearing really good things, although everyone's expressing sort of like, uh, you know, some cringing because it's about a brother and a sister who grow up very isolated in Newfoundland and they have a baby together. But I mean, I grew up reading Flowers in the Attic, so like, it doesn't face me. <laughs> I'm really excited to read it. Uh, and that is it. So uh, thanks for watching and don't expect to see another haul till next year, probably. All right.